Hi guys, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we're just going to run through today um, how to hook up uh, Seiku Analytics to uh, Microsoft Analysis Services. It's a common request that we get from a number of uh, uh, potential customers and clients who want to be able to offer uh, their analytics to a wider audience without having to actually install fat client software or other third-party software. They want stuff that's quick and easy to set up and hopefully today we'll, uh, we'll run for it and demonstrate how quick and easy it is to get um, Seiku working over analysis services. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, this is the uh, Object Explorer and SQL Server Management Studio uh, that I've got installed on a remote server here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. At the bottom, we've got our AdventureWorks database, which is one of the test databases that um, Microsoft um, ship to allow people to get to know their products and services, a bit like Foodmart for Seiku, which um, is what we ship as a, as a test platform. Um, so, we've installed from the internet uh, AdventureWorks, as you can see here, we've got a bunch of tables down the side, and users and roles, and then up at the top is where the analysis services stuff gets started. Now, I'm not a core analysis services user, I have interacted with it a few times, but I'm not an expert on the setup and configuration of analysis services, but it's pretty straightforward. You've got your data sources and your views that are available for users. Um, and then similarly, obviously, um, with analysis services being an OLAP client and server, um, they have the idea of cubes and dimensions and measures that go within that. So very much a similar setup to how Mondrian works in the back end of Seiku, um, allowing people to define data models and then um, uh, present them to end users. So with, uh, with analysis services installed, the, the next part of the puzzle is being able to uh, allow third-party applications to connect with Seiku, uh, sorry, with analysis services um, in order for us to be able to query the data that's obviously contained within those cubes. Uh, and so to do this, uh, we use a, 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 a third, uh, it's supplied by Microsoft, it's, it's an extra set of libraries that uh, work with analysis services, and it's the MSMD pump. It's, um, it's a, it's a it's a layer that goes in between the web requests that go in and analysis services themselves, allowing analysis services to talk in a protocol protocol called XMLA, which is um, an XML structure for analysis uh, based queries. Um, and so to do this is a Windows machine and a Windows environment. So we use um, IIS as a, as a web. Um, endpoint uh, for analysis services. And so with that set up, we can then have a look in the uh, IIS, IIS manager. So I've created an endpoint here, a website, so to speak, uh, which is on slash OLAP. Um, and then within that, uh, we have the resources. The resources. Um, uh, the is the DLL that's our core resource because obviously the endpoint isn't there to serve uh, websites for users it's there to serve data for Seiku from analysis services so within the handler mangs I've set up um, the OLAP endpoint um, and the path is the DLL path that tells that tells IIS when Seiku hits that endpoint to um, then uh, uh, forward that request onto the DLL, which will in turn obviously hit analysis services. Then if we go back to the top, the other thing of course is authentication because we don't want um, the raw data to be available to anyone on the internet. So there's two things you can do here. One of them being Windows authentication. Uh, the Windows authentication will allow you to use standard um, Windows credentials to authenticate against your um, analysis services setup. 
Uh, we can also use basic authentication. So if it's not on the domain or you want to use some external uh, authentication mechanism, then you can use basic auth and just set a username and password and authenticate that way. So with that in mind, we have our remote server. Um, we have um, uh, Microsoft IIS to obviously act as an intermediary between Seiku and um, and analysis services. Uh, and so our AdventureWorks Cube, so to speak, should then be ready for consumption. Um, so if you're if you're connecting to analysis services from a remote machine, obviously you have to make sure the firewall's open. Um, and you've got your port, ports forwarded uh, properly and all that type of stuff. Um, because it works over HTTP, it's just standard port 80 or 443 if you're going to use um, SSL security. Um, so then we'll swap over and we'll have a look at uh, Seiko. So. <clears throat> So we've got our standard Seiku server. Uh, this will work in both C and EE. Um, there's, there's no difference between the two in the way that they actually connect. Um, we provide connectivity in both platforms equally for XMLA. Um, XMLA is not just limited to analysis services. Uh, Mondrian also has an XMLA server if you want to run remote Mondrian servers. Um, S -Base is already, or, sorry, S -Base is also um, an XMLA provider. So uh, whilst Microsoft owned the bragging rights of coming up with all of this, um, XMLA and OLAP is obviously used um, in a much wider um, area. So within the admin console, we've created this XMLA demo data source. Now, it, XMLA data sources are by far the easiest data sources to set up within Seiku because Seiku doesn't need to have a cube defined. It doesn't need a schema defined. It will just um, read directly from, um, in this case, analysis services. And so analysis services provides the, the document structure and, and the way that the schema is set up. So without us having to create a Mondrian schema, it makes life an awful lot easier. So when you're creating a new data source, um, all you have to do is obviously define a name. The connection type, as today is all about XMLA, is obviously XMLA. Um, and then the URL is obviously the important bit. So we've got the HTTP prefix. Um, in this case, I'm running off an Amazon box. So we've got the Amazon uh, bit. But then you see at the end, um, we've got um, slash OLAP slash msmdpump.dll, which is a bit of a handful, but is exactly where we're looking. So that's the endpoint that we set up set up um, on analysis services. And so we've just told um, Seiku to hit that endpoint. Um, as I'm using Windows authentication, I've set my username as administrator in the password that um, was provided to me by um, uh, Amazon. So with that all in place, you then hit save, um, and then you can go to your new query window. Now, if everything works accordingly, you should be able to hit the green refresh icon, which will refresh all the data sources available on the Seiku platform. Uh, and then in the list below, you can see here, we've got um, AdventureWorks and Mind Customers, which the two cubes are available to um, Seiku from our analysis services box. So if I go ahead and click on Mind Customers, for example, you can see here, that we've got the list of measures, we've got the list of dimensions that are available to Seiku without having defined a schema. We've just connected to the um, XMLA um, service. And then obviously creating a query is as simple as it always is in uh, Seiku. I'm not going to go through the whole feature set of Seiku because most of you know how, how it works, obviously. Um, but there you go. That's um, querying. XMLA data services um, in next to no time. So you can drag it around, and as soon as that, obviously at that point, you have full access to the Seiku charts, you have full ex uh, access to the Seiku exports, um, 
and along with our embedding features and parameterization features, this means that you can obviously utilize an awful lot of the SACU platform um, as a front end to analysis services. So um, as, as, as analysis services users uh, want to gain more insight and access to their data, possibly in a more flexible manner, then obviously a tool like SACU can offer an awful lot of flexibility to businesses uh, without having um, to spend an awful lot of time in the setup and configuration. The idea is it will always provide a layer on top. You can push security down to analysis services as well. So you can you can apply role level security and data security to your cubes and your uh, measures uh, to users who log in. Um, you can also utilize the power of the Seiku embed framework and the dashboard uh, framework that will be coming um, in early summer, which will, uh, well, the embed framework already allows you to, and the dashboard framework will allow you to create dashboards on top of analysis services and on top of Mondrian and other data sources um, without, without having to actually write lines of code. Uh, the embed framework, um, as it suggests will allow you to embed ports, charts, tables uh, from Seiku directly into uh, into third-party web applications, um, and of course you can use iframe as well. All these queries can be parameterized, so you can also pass parameters across to analysis services from within Seiku as an end user. Um, and that will allow people to obviously create uh, quite complex dashboards with uh, linked filters and the ability to drill down and across um, in various ways without having to expose uh, the full feature set that analysis services offer, obviously offers to end users and for a fraction of the price. Um, so there we go. I, I hope this will have provided some uh, use to people and will be of interest. Um, if anyone has got any questions, you can in, you can email us at info at meteorite.bi um, and go away and um, have a play. Thanks for joining.